this video we're going to be taking a look at a beginner's guide to neoclassical guitar as well as sweet picking. Now this video isn't a video of me flying around the uh, guitar neck at a million miles an hour leaving singe marks on the neck and uh, trying to impress everyone. This is really a beginner's guide to all the different things that we need to be looking at uh, to be able to play a style that essentially became popular with the likes of Richie Blackmore incorporating classical lines like Bach uh, as influence on um, heavy metal. I remember as a kid learning, um, I think it was Death Alley Driver uh, from a Rainbow album, which went. Uh, <laughs> which was the first time I kind of heard it, which was like Bach influenced. We then listened to, uh, as we got older, listened to Ingve Malmsteen. He's well worth checking out, probably the, you know, almost like a god-like figure in the world of neoclassical metal guitar. As well as players like Marty Friedman and Jason Becker, they have two albums out, uh, Dragon's Kiss and Perpetual Burn which I, I recommend it listening. I probably miss a lot of other uh, different guitarists so, but they are the ones that stand out in my mind of being able to listen to. So let's take a close up of the neck now. One of the first things to look at with neoclassical is how we hold the guitar. I'm holding it like this. Which is really the position that you would be if you were stood up with the guitar strap on. We want to be using all four fingers uh, up until now, depending on what level of guitar you are at, uh, you may have been playing guitar riffs, you know, with the thumb hooked over type of thing, which you can get away with. If you're going to be playing neoclassical, you want to use all four fingers. Now, this video is being used really on my uh, blog, which has all the relevant sheets and print-offs underneath, so check them out. Uh, the link for that blog will be in the, the description of this video. And really want to be looking at a lot of finger exercises. Uh, one of the ones that really got the ball rolling for me was a Steve Vai guitar lesson. Uh, it was a path to virtuoso enlightenment, which was a lot of finger exercises, but essentially cutting it right down to simplistic terms, we want to be able to do this. <laughs> all four fingers on the neck being able to pick look into picking uh, economy picking up and down all of the time with the pick at a 45 degree angle a lot of videos on YouTube explaining that probably more in depth than what I want to on this video the path to virtuoso enlightenment uh, guitar lesson has loads of different derivatives of exercises again that goes quite in depth with that Definitely worth checking out. And really, if you can't be, if you can't manage to do that, you need to check that out first before you go any further. The next thing we need to look at, which is the harmonic minor scale. Now, if we assume that you already know the A minor scale, which is really all the harmonic minor scale is is the minor scale with a raised seventh. So it means every seventh note is raised up one fret. And to go through that, we're gonna go through it like this, taking that scale shape, and we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. And instead of playing this one, we're gonna play that one. That's, that's your raised seventh. Back to the A. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's your seventh again raised. Finishing on the A. So we have. And go through this. actually be um, a mode within the harmonic minor scale which would be E phrygian dominant or otherwise known as Spanish phrygian 
So the modes within the harmonic minor scale are worth checking out as well. And with shapes like that we can come up with these kind of runs. Like that. Now if we're going to jump forward uh, to uh, being familiar with the harmonic minor scale. If we took exercises like this, uh, say on a high E string, if we play this. We could mix that up a bit. We could repeat that same type of thing on the G string. Like that. Now the next thing that we need to be looking at is really, when we, especially when we come to sweep picking, is being able to know the chords all over the neck. And this takes in um, really expanding on our knowledge of the caged system. So if we took something like the A minor chord, it's in its uh, open position. We know it as a as a bar chord. We also know A minor. If we do like a D minor shape, with our first finger on the eighth fret, that would give us an A minor. We also know an octave up. Now if we use them notes that we've learned, we can come up with things like this. And really what we're doing there is essentially using A minor all over the neck. I've put the guitar tab on the screen to make that easier to follow. From a technique point of view, now our little fingers on the A of the high E, we are picking down stroke. Then as we go to our A minor shape, we are like sweeping. So it's all up strokes. Then back down. And if we use that technique, we can achieve a uh, a great amount of speed. Well, being able to know the A minor all over the neck gives you the ability to to make them kind of runs really in our sleep, uh, which might have been difficult up until this point. If we apply the same principle to the E chord, we can do it in the open position, we can do an E in the D position, as a bar chord, in the G chord position with our root note on the 12th fret of the bottom A. E shape and octave up. Like that. That gives us the ability to play these kind of sweet picking runs. If we mix the A minor and the E up as shapes. mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, Ingve Malmsteen is probably the, uh, the most prominent and the innovator of uh, the neoclassical uh, style, taking it at great lengths. And one of his greatest abilities was to be able to take a repeated pattern and to play it at speed throughout the neck. And one of the examples I learned as a kid was this one. Where we take an, a simple phrase like on the high E string, we're going 10, 12, 8, 12, 7, 12. It's going to repeat that on the B string. It's going to 
going to do the same again, this time with the ring finger on the 7th fret of G. Same again on the D string. Same pattern on the 5th fret, this time of the A. Same again on bottom A. Second example we're going to use is an E diminished phrase, which goes like this. We're taking the same shape and repeating it all the way up the neck. So we're going to go 3 0, second fret of B, third fret of G. Back up to the second to the high A. And we want to be achieving this. Oh. Try to get it really fast with that picking. We're going to repeat the shape. Ball on the third. Little finger on the sixth fret. Little finger on the ninth. Same again finger on the 12th, same again, 15th fret, finishing on 17th fret. So as I said at the beginning of the video, this is really a skimming over and a real rough look at what the things that we need to look more in depth at when attempting to play a neoclassical style along with sweep picking because it's been something I've constantly getting asked how to do. One uh, piece of music that I learned years ago for an exam was from the grade 8 book a piece called Metal Mania and that goes something like this and um, it's really worth uh, learning because it incorporates all the, pe the pieces but this was the introduction and this is what you'll be able to do uh, if you practice all the different things that we've looked at. This is really rough, I haven't looked at this for years and this is off the top of my head, so it's not going to be perfect. So be, be warned. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I hope that helps you be able to get started in playing the styles of uh, neoclassical and sweep picking.